Hi guys, this is Holly Draper, and in this webinar we're going to talk about the top 10 most useful essential oils and how we can use them every single day to make have excuse me to have better health and to make our lives better. Uh, really quick, uh, I just want to introduce myself. I uh, I'm an herbologist, so I use herbs and teas and tinctures quite a bit. I also am an energy practitioner, and I also am a kinesiologist. And I love, love, love essential oils because they are so powerful in what they can do in their healing action on our human bodies. And so I'm very passionate about essential oils, and hopefully you feel that passion as you listen to this webinar. <laughs> and I highly suggest that when you learn about essential oils, you learn from somebody who actually has a training in accredited aromatherapy because there's so much um, weird stuff going on out there in aromatherapy. So make sure you get your training in the right place. Like here, great, great place to get it. So <laughs> I'm going to turn on my slides and let's jump right into learning about the top 10 most useful essential oils. Really quick, before we get started, I am not trying to diagnose or treat anything. Um, this information that you're receiving here is for informational purposes only, and most of these, um, this information that I'm sharing with you is based on historical use of his essential oils, and they have been used, and uh, there is a written history of the use of essential oils that goes back for thousands and thousands of years. They have been used for millennia, and they have proven very, very effective over that time. So that's kind of what I'm giving you, and it's for informational purposes only. Uh, this is me again in a lavender field, and like I said, I love essential oils. I love herbs. I love all healing modalities, um, all alternative healing modalities. And I especially love the essential oils. This is my cute little family. I do have four kids, and so I've had lots and lots, years and years of <laughs> experience using essential oils and herbs and things for all kinds of things you can so a couple months ago purify skin therapy brought on a line of essential oils that all right so we're gonna jump into these essential oils the top 10 I in my over tw almost um, probably over 12 years of studying aromatherapy now have used more of these oils than any others and so these are the most commonly used um, the ones we can really use day to day they are tea tree peppermint lavender frankincense myrrh, lemon, eucalyptus radiata, lemongrass, orange, and spearmint. And now I'm going to go over every single one, what it does, and how you can use it on a daily basis. So first let's talk about tea tree. There are two essential oils that I never leave my home without because in a pinch you can pretty much do anything with two essential oils. One of them is tea tree and the other one is peppermint. I never leave my home without those two oils. And let's talk a little bit about tea tree. The Aborigines of Australia were the first to discover the healing properties of tea tree oil thousands of years ago. They treated cuts, burns, and skin infections by crushing the leaves of the, of the tree and applying them to the cuts and injuries. In the 1770s, the British explorer Captain Cook observed the native Australians brewing tea from the leaves, and so he then made that tea, brewed the tea of his own, and he gave it to his crew to prevent scurvy. And so he actually coined the name tea tree. Now some people know this oil as Melaleuca. That is the botanical name of this oil. It's Melaleuca alternifolia. But that's the botanical name. Its common name is tea tree, given to it by Captain Cook. And I just think that's pretty interesting. You can actually use this oil for all of these things. That's what it's amazing for. So you can treat cuts, burns, and skin infections with tea tree essential oil. It is quite amazing. Tea tree is a part of the Melaleuca family, which means that it has amazing antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal, and antiparasitic properties. Historically, it's been used for disinfecting and wound healing, and it's also a very powerful immune and lymphatic system stimulant. It's been used for disinfecting wounds from its discovery and so you can treat it for infected wounds. So if you have a cut or a scrape or a wound on your body that becomes red, swollen, infected, or sore, you can simply apply tea tree oil straight to that area. So tea tree oil is your oil of choice anytime you get 
an owie, an injury or a wound. Oh, I forgot to mention here really quick before we go on, it's a powerful immune and lymphatic system stimulant also. So you can actually use tea tree essential oil when you get sick. A great way to use it for that would be to put it on the soles of your feet. You can get um, the oil into your bloodstream very quickly by putting it on the soles of your feet. You can put three to five drops on the bottom of each foot, rub it in, and let, let it sit on there for a couple minutes. And as it goes in through your skin into your blood system, it gives your entire immune system a boost. It helps it function better, and it helps it be stronger. And that's the same with your lymphatic system. In fact, tea tree is an amazing lymphatic disinfectant, so you can use it for your lymph system also. You can use tea tree essential oil with lymph brushing, um, which also stimulates your lymphatic system. Some of you may know about that. In the 1920s, Australian physicians began to use the oil to clean wounds and prevent infections after surgery. In 1923, an Australian government scientist, Dr. A. R. Penfold, conducted a study of tea tree essential oil and found it to be 12 times stronger as an antiseptic bactericide than carbolic acid, which was the current standard at the time. So tea tree, even though it's a gentle oil, is extremely good at killing uh, pathogens. So it's extremely antiseptic, which means it kills the pathogens that attack us on and in our body. It's incredibly strong, even though it's a gentle oil. Average Australians then began to use the oil as a household remedy for skin conditions and fungal infections. And during World War II, tea tree oil was included in the first aid kits given to Australian soldiers and sailors. And in fact, they still carry, um, Australian soldiers and sail sailors still carry tea tree oil in their first aid kits today because it is quite amazing if you do get injured. According to the Britical Medical Journal in British, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, today I've got my tongue twisters. British Medical Journal in 1933, tea tree essential oil is a powerful disinfective disinfectant, non-poisonous, and non-irritating. Tea tree is treasured as having unrivaled anti-infectious properties. After the discovery of penicillin and other antibiotics in the late 1940s, tea tree oil went out of favor as an antiseptic until the 1980s when it was discovered that some bacteria were resistant to certain antibiotics such as meth uh, metho methicillin and vancomycin. So tea tree essential oil is one of the best disinfecting oils in the world. And so you can disinfect your body, wounds, you can um, boost your immune system with this oil. You can also clean your house with tea tree because it disinfects better than almost anything else you can use. In fact, we have a cleaning pack available on purifyskintherapy.com. It's in the pack section of essential oils. And it's all the essential oils you need to clean and disinfect your house. And when you buy the pack, you get a free cleaning card of 100% natural cleaning recipes that you can make very, very inexpensively and use in your own home to clean your home and keep it 100% natural. So check that out, too. I love this quote. It's by Dr. Jean Valnet. He's a French medical doctor. Uh, and his, this quote says, essential oils are especially valuable as antiseptics. Now rem remember, antiseptics kill the pathogens that attack our bodies. So they're very, very good. So it's an, as an antiseptic, because their aggression toward microbial germs is matched by their total harmlessness to tissue, one of the chief defects of chemical antiseptics in that they are likely to be as harmful to the cells of the organism as to the cause of the disease. And so essential, essential oils, not only are they so effective, yet they're so gentle and they are non-harmful to our human bodies, which if you're like me, that's a very important point. <laughs> tea tree is also the sore throat oil. You can take a drop of tea tree oil, pour it right from the bottle onto the back of your hand, once it's on the back of your hand, lick it off with your tongue, hold it in your throat. I hold it in the back of my throat right against where it gets really sore. Um, and I like to hold it there for about a minute. And then I will swallow that. And then after about a minute, I'll do it again if my sore throat is still there. You can completely wipe out a sore throat by doing these tea tree licks is what we call them. 
um, as long as your tea tree is a good quality tea tree. But I think the tea tree is so amazing for sore throats and out of all the things I tell people to do, this once they get really good tea tree, absolutely blown away how fast you can knock out a sore throat. And if you catch it right at the beginning before the infection gets really big, um, you can completely knock it out and you won't even get sick. And so I've experienced that so many times in my own life and seen other people do it. It's quite amazing. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is peppermint, my second favorite and the second one that I never leave my home without. <laughs> I love peppermint, but this peppermint will blow you away. It's incredibly strong and has very high levels of menthol. So let's talk about this. But um, with peppermint, there is a safety issue, so you need to be aware once you're going to start using peppermint, you need to be aware of the safety of this oil. Peppermint should never be used around children ages 3 and under. It is not for infants and small children. Um, it can actually cause breathing spasms in, in their throat and they can actually suffocate with this oil if it gets too strong. So you especially want to keep it away from their face and nose. It is not for use in pregnancy. Now you can use a drop or two at the beginning of pregnancy because this is a really great oil for nausea and you can use it um, with morning sickness. However, in just a minute, I'm going to give you an, a better option. So a drop or two here and there is okay. You just don't want to use it all the time in pregnancy because it can cause issues. Very high levels of menthol. That's a chemical that comes naturally from the plant, which is what you want. You want this chemical in its natural state. It's very important. Um, and it's a very cooling oil. And so let's talk about the uses of peppermint. Guess what? Peppermint has very high levels of menthol. That's a good thing because menthol is a, is a chemical that alleviates pain. And so peppermint is the best pain oil that there is. Knocks out all kinds of pain, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. It's also a very cooling oil, which is a good thing. Um, and it's really good if you're in pain or if you're using it for headaches or if you have hot type pain that's going on in your body where it, the, the area feels very hot and painful, peppermint is the perfect oil. It is my favorite oil for pain, and I use it for all kinds of pain. It's very effective for bruising where there's not broken skin. So like say if you whack yourself like on your shin and you go, oh, that's going to bruise, quickly put a couple drops of peppermint over that area because not only does it help with the pain, but peppermint actually as it soaks into the skin and goes into the body, it can help minimize the damage that that injury uh, will cause. And so it can minimize bruising and it can help actually minimize that wound. Not only that, but it also speeds healing. And so it knocks out the pain, it helps it heal faster, and it minimizes the damage. Really important that it's organic, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute too. Peppermint is fast acting and it energizes other oils that you use it with. And so that's why another reason why it's great for injuries where there's not broken skin, um, where there's painful, you know, bruising type injuries, smashing type injuries, peppery, peppermint is amazing for. Now if there is broken skin, then you're going to use the essential oil tea tree that we just talked about because that actually is a cell regenerator, helps heal that wound, disinfects it. So if there's broken skin, it's the tea tree you're going to use. Peppermint is also really good for digestion. It helps all kinds of digestive issues from upset, upset stomachs to gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Peppermint is an amazing digestion oil. It's one of the strongest antispasmodic oils, so for any kind of spasming, um, or painful spasming, try peppermint is quite remarkable. You can also use it for coughing. Um, one thing I didn't tell you about is you can actually make a peppermint tea if you take a tablespoon of honey, put one drop of peppermint, this organic peppermint essential oil. Now if you're going to be ingesting essential oils or putting them in your mouth and swallowing them, you want to be absolutely sure that they're certified organic and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. So take organic, uh, one drop of organic peppermint in that tablespoon of honey, mix it up really good, mix the peppermint oil down into that honey, and then put that into one cup of warm water, and you've just made super easy peppermint tea that will help with your digestion, it will help with coughing, 
it also boosts your Im Im whole uh, immune system as you drink this tea and it's really good for spasming. Uh, it's also decongesting. Peppermint oil is a great oil. You can actually diffuse peppermint as long as there's nobody ages three and under in the room or in the house because you don't want to be diffusing peppermint oil if you do have babies or small children then don't diffuse it. Then you, what you would do is you would take a couple drops put it on a cotton ball and hold that cotton ball underneath your nose and breathe it very deeply and it's very uh, decongesting. That's the way you would use it if there's kids around you and just keep the cotton ball to yourself. They can be in the same room, that's no problem, but just um, don't let them get that cotton ball either. Uh, peppermint is also a breath freshener and works great. You can just take a lick of it right off the back of your hand and uh, swallow it and hold it in your mouth and swish it and swallow it and it's a breath freshener. Now the reason we put one drop on the back of your hand and not just hold the bottle up to your mouth and drop a drop in is because inevitably when you hold the whole bottle up to your mouth to drop one single drop in your mouth inevitably ten drops come out and ten drops of this medicinal grade peppermint is way too much, way too strong. So just drop it on the back of your hand just ensures that you get a single drop because these oils are very, very strong and very, very concentrated. Uh, like I mentioned, you can use it for digestive pains and digestive issues and flatulence and gas and all that kind of stuff. And for spasms, if you have muscle spasms or um, any other kind of spasming in your body, put a drop of peppermint over that area and it works really good. You can also use peppermint for headaches. It's one of my favorite oils for pain, remember? And headaches are definitely a pain. So what I do to use it for headaches is I take a couple drops of peppermint, three to four, in the palm of my hand, and then I carefully put it onto the fingertips of my hand from the palm. Then with those, the oil on my fingertips, I go around my hairline, starting in the front of my forehead, right at my hairline. I go around my hairline, down and around my sideburns, up and around my ears, and across the back of the hairline on the back of my neck. You want to make sure you get a trace amount of peppermint oil around the whole uh, hairline. We call it a peppermint halo. So you're doing a peppermint halo and then um, if you're suffering from headaches you're going to want to follow that peppermint halo with lavender oil which we're going to talk about also in just a minute. You can actually open the, the lid of this peppermint oil hold it under your nose and sit and breathe it in and it helps all kinds of nausea. It helps motion sickness, uh, morning sickness, like I mentioned you don't want to use it too too much in pregnancy but you can use it in small amounts um, but definitely for motion sickness like if you're in the car and somebody's getting a little motion sickness to smell peppermint can pull people right out of that so it works really good. You can also take a couple drops of peppermint Drop it onto a Kleenex or a cotton ball and hold that under your nose and it works as well. Uh, motion sickness again and then I'm going to mention right here, I did talk a little bit about morning sickness. You can make this peppermint tea like I explained with one drop of peppermint for uh, morning sickness with pregnant women. That's okay occasionally but a better option is to actually make peppermint tea with the herb peppermint. Of course you want organic if you're going to make a tea out of it because you know whatever's on those leaves is going to be going into your body. So you want organic like tea leaves like go buy or peppermint tea and make up a tea from the herb peppermint and you can drink that as much as you want during pregnancy. The, 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 the chemicals in the essential oils are so concentrated that the, the essential oil is much stronger than the herb and so you do want to be careful with peppermint in pregnancy. I hope I explained that well enough that you understood that. Peppermint also increases focus and so you can take one drop of peppermint and put it on your third eye chakra which is right in the center of your forehead. You don't want to get peppermint ever ever in your eyes. It burns really bad um, and essential oils are not good in your eyes so you just want to take one drop of peppermint put it on the center to kind of the upper center of your forehead but it really stimulates your brain and helps with focus and it will help you remember things better too. You can take a drop of peppermint essential oil for and use it on a mosquito bite, a spider bite, or any kind of bug bite. It not only takes down the swelling because peppermint is somewhat anti-inflammatory but it also takes away the pain because it's such a great pain oil but it also makes the swelling go down, takes the redness out. It works so good on, good on all kinds of bug bites. 
it's also an insect and rodent repellent. And so you can use peppermint for a mosquito repellent, for a bug repellent. And again, if you're going to use it on your body, make sure you're not using it on young children. A better option for them, if you're trying to use it as a bug repellent, would be spearmint, which we're going to talk about that oil in just a minute. Um, but to use as an, an insect repellent, you can actually take a glass mister bottle and fill it up with about an ounce of water and put you know five to seven drops of peppermint oil, essential oil in there, shake it up really good and spray it over your body just like a bug repellent. Um, we actually at Purify Skin Therapy have a blend which is stronger to use than just plain peppermint and it's called Bug Repel. So if you want a 100% natural bug repellent, check out the blend that we have. It's called Bug Repel, but peppermint also works uh, for that. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is lavender, and the lavender that we get is the high altitude French lavender because the French lavender is the most this lavender is the most healing and medicinal lavender to be found anywhere in the world. And so this is a very, very uh, effective and healing lavender. In my opinion, this is the best lavender anywhere in the world, and it works really good. You compare this to any other lavender, and there are literally thousands and thousands of different species and different um, kinds of lavender out there. This one is, in my opinion, by far the best. And what does a lavender essential oil do? It does everything. Lavender is a universal oil, and literally you can use it. If you don't know what to use it for, um, uh, one of the great aromatherapists said, if you don't know what to use a lavender essential oil for, use it for whatever you need it, and it's a good choice. <laughs> and it's really true. You can use it for everything. The name lavender actually comes from the Latin lavare, which means to wash. It was one of the favorites of the Romans in connection with their lavish bathing activities. You know that the, the Romans did amazing um, baths that they did for hours and hours on end, the Roman baths. Anyway, uh, lavender is also generally regarded as the most useful and versatile essential oil that there is. It's a sedative and it's a to got a toning action on the heart, and so it's a calming oil and it can help calm you down, especially if you're excited or worried or stressed. It can actually calm you down and also lowers high blood pressure. Lavender oil is a great one to diffuse into the air. And as you breathe it in, if you can smell this oil, you're breathing in the molecules of this oil. And as you breathe it down in, it's very, very healing for your lungs. French lavender is one of the most amazing things to use for burns and sunburns. It also helps bruises because, like peppermint, it helps a little bit with the pain, but it actually goes in and it minimizes the damage of that injury. So it actually is really, really good to use on bruises and scarring because it helps minimize scarring. Um, it's calming and relaxing, like I mentioned, so you, some people do use it for insomnia. Now, lavender doesn't work on everybody for insomnia, just so you know. Um, if you've ever used lavender oil, and it doesn't work for you, it, two, two things, it's not a good lavender, or <laughs> um, lavender oil doesn't work for you. And if you want to check out on PurifySkinTherapy.com, we have some amazing oils that will help you sleep. They're blends, and one is called Relax Blend, and one is called Release Blend. And so if you're having issues sleeping, look those up on our website and check them out, read about them, and you'll know which one will help you sleep better. But lavender does help for some people. It is also analgesic, which means it's good for pain. Not as strong as peppermint, but it does help with pain. Lavender uh, oil helps with depression just by inhaling it and smelling it. It can lighten your mood. It also helps with migraines. Remember I said you can use it with headaches. First make a peppermint halo and then make a lavender halo. You can also do that with migraines. Both headaches and migraines greatly benefit from the use of these two oils. Um, and we also have a blend on our website just for headaches that if these two alone don't work, try out our headache blend, which is a roll-on that you roll right around your hairline. And it's a blend of the most powerful essential oils that combat headaches, and it works really, really good for that too. Lavender is a great one to use for wound healing because it's, it's cell regenerating and it helps wounds heal faster and better. It takes the pain away. 
and with less scarring. So this is an amazing one to use with wound healing. Like I mentioned, it's cell regenerating, and this is probably one of the best oils for massage. So you can, if you want to use this for massage, just on have somebody lay down and on their back, down their spine, drop about seven drops of lavender essential oil down their spine, and then you can rub that in, and then drop a couple drops of a carrier oil. Now my favorite carrier oil is grapeseed oil. It's a fixed oil or a nut or seed oil. Uh, is a carrier oil, so I want to drop about 10 drops of grape seed oil down that back then, and then give a little massage, uh, and it's just a great healing, immune-boosting, relaxing massage with lavender. Lavender is an excellent children's oil and can be used also with children and young children, as long as it's a good lavender, and it's useful with colic in children, as long as it's a good lavender. You can also use it with earaches. You never ever put essential oils into the ear. However, you can apply it around the ear, around the outside of the ear, and especially behind your ear, there's a kind of a bone that's a bumpy bone directly behind your ear. That's your mastoid process bone. That's where you want to put um, lavender essential oil for earaches. And you can also use rosemary essential oil, and that same place really helps with earaches. Um, but if you use and smell lavender as you're smelling it, it also helps balance out your emotions. So it's such a great universal oil. You can see lavender is just quite amazing. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is frankincense essential oil. And before we jump into what it can do, it's important for you to understand your limbic system and how that functions. The this is what you're looking at is a cross section of your brain. If I were to cut your brain in half down the middle, and pull it into two parts. This is what you'd see. Now, the way that you register the scent of smell, the sense of smell, is your olfactory bulb has olfactory receptors that go down into your, the top of your nasal cavity. When you breathe in aromatic molecules that are scented, those the receptor cells pull it up into the olfactory bulb, which then pulls those molecules back into the core part of your brain where you register the scent of smell, the sense of smell. And it's the limbic system or the core part of your brain is also where your emotional center is. It's where you process and store emotional um, emotions and emotional data in your brain. And so to use the sense of smell or aromatherapy to help heal emotional issues is one of the best ways to heal those because it goes right to the source. Now, frankincense can actually assist the brain to function better. So if you're having brain issues or there's something in the brain going on, frankincense is going to be the oil and you just want to inhale it in a diffuser or off a couple drops on a cotton ball and just hold that under your nose and sit and breathe it in. Frankincense is really good for the brain. Frankincense is also amazing for the skin. It has been used for thousands and thousands of years for skin and skin issues and skin conditions. You can, um, again, drop drops of frankincense onto your skin over areas and rub it in, and you can. it does all kinds of amazing things for skin. It also heals scars, and I like to combine frankincense with lavender essential oil and apply it to scars, and it does really quite amazing things. Frankincense is also great for your lungs, so it's a great one to diffuse because as you're breathing it in, not only is your brain benefiting, but your lungs benefit, and so it heals your lungs. You can use it this way for asthma, um, but you can use frankincense alone. You can put a couple drops on a cotton ball, hold that right under your nose and breathe it in, and it actually really helps. You can use it for any kind of uh, breathing issues, and it is a, emotionally a really healing oil if you've had emotional trauma, frankincense can be very, very healing depending on what the issues are. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is myrrh. And myrrh is one of my favorite, favorite all-time oils. And let me tell you why. Myrrh is a very strong and dependable oil for pain. It is one of my favorite oils to use in painful situations. It does not act as fast as peppermint does. Remember, pe peppermint is really fast acting. However, I always put myrrh on first, drop a couple drops over the painful area, rub it in, let it sit, uh, you know, kind of soak into the skin for a minute, and then I apply peppermint. Because even though peppermint acts very fast, 
myrrh lasts for longer and it keeps the pain away longer than any other oil and it is really good for all kinds of pain uh, it's also good for mouth sores and gum sores it's um, been used for millennia with all kinds of mouth sores gum issues um, gum and mouth conditions myrrh is a great oil to help heal the mouth you can also use it with sore throats. You can take a drop and do a lick trick, just like we did the tea tree, although I think tea tree is a better essential oil for sore throats. You can do it also with myrrh. Um, myrrh also aids in tonsillitis. You can actually apply it to the outside of your throat and keep it on the outside of your throat to help with tonsillitis. Myrrh is a strong anti-inflammatory oil, so as you use it for the pain, you're also getting its amazing anti-inflammatory effects. And myrrh has feminine energy, and so it actually supports women and women's issues better than most oils. And so if you have women issues that are painful, myrrh is one of the best oils. You can actually use it for cramps and uh, PMS-type issues. You can actually apply myrrh right to the painful area over the lower abdomen, um, and it just works really, really good for that. Also, myrrh is very grounding. It's an earth energy oil, and if you're... Uh, worrying or uh, having you know worrying anxiety type issues you can actually use myrrh to bring you down ground you and bring you back into your body it's very useful for that this is another quote by a friend of mine and she says I have used essential oils for many years as a distributor and educator for another essential oil company I thought those were the highest quality oils that I could purchase I taught education classes about essential oils and how they can impact healing families and individuals. I saw results with many of the oils, but there was a point I started to doubt what I was teaching when different family members and friends reacted terribly to the oils. I still continued to teach when I was confronted by a sweet woman who told me about Holly's essential oil classes. It took me six months to get to one of, of to get, sorry, to get to one class fearing what I was teaching was wrong. To my dismay, the oils I was using, sharing, and teaching were not the highest quality. I understood why my family members were having bad reactions. They were taking a lemon oil internally that wasn't certified pure organic. The moment I opened the bottle of Purify's Lemon, I was blown away. It smelled just like a freshly grated lemon compared to the other which smelled like lemon candy. I was shocked. The biggest surprise was when I took a bottle of Spearmint home. I had tried every oil in the book to help my daughter sleep. The moment I put Purify Spearmint on her pillow, she slept all night and has been sleeping ever since. I find comfort knowing they are safe to use on me and my family. So not all essential oils are created the same. That's why the Purify essential oils are so amazing. And if you're using essential oils, I'm going to ask you very bluntly, what quality of essential oils are you using? At a bare minimum, make sure they're certified organic. And definitely try Purify Skin Therapies Essential Oils. You will see the difference. Our, um, our tagline is, with one smell, we believe you will see the difference because they are so much better than other essential oils out there on the market. Now let's jump back into lemon and learn about lemon essential oil. Lemon oil is second to none in its antiseptic and bactericidal properties. And that's a quote by Dr. Jean Belnay, a French medical doctor. It is so antiseptic, which means it kills pathogens. It kills bacteria, viruses, funguses. It kills all kinds of pathogens on contact. It's amazing. So lemon oil actually cleans the inside of your body when you ingest this organic oil. It actually cleans you out on the inside. It's excellent to clean out the liver. And you can actually do a gentle liver cleanse by... Um, by taking one drop of, of lemon oil first thing in the morning either in water or um, in actually there's a lemon there's excuse me there's a liver cleanse let me tell you really quick first thing that you wake up in the morning take the half of a fresh lemon squeeze out the juice into that juiced lemon put one drop of lemon organic lemon essential oil and one drop of organic peppermint essential oil Mix that up, don't put water in it or anything, and just gulp that down. It's very sour, very strong. And then wait 20 minutes and then eat normally for the rest of the day. Do that for 30 days in the morning, and that's a very effective gentle liver cleanse. Now, lemon oil has the capacity to actually start triggering 
detoxification enzymes in your liver and it actually stimulates your liver to detoxify so it works really really good when you smell lemon oil it raises your mood this, this is true with all citrus oils it raises your mood so it brings you up so it's really great to use against depression anxiety nervousness worry the citrus oils will help lift that away from you and so lemon oil stimulates the left side of your brain or logical thinking so if you're doing a job where you're doing a lot of data entry or note taking or you know really logical type stuff you can actually smell or diffuse lemon essential oil and it helps your brain function better it's really cool you can actually mix this with orange oil which we're going to talk about in just a minute and get a complete brain you know kind of um, support and stimulate stimulus so lemon improves data entry and logical thoughts and it also cleans your house and like I mentioned before we have a cleaning pack that includes tea tree remember we talked about tea tree as a dif disinfectant and also lemon oil are in this pack and when you buy that pack you get the all the recipe cards to make your own 100 percent natural uh, household cleaning recipes so uh, lemon oil is fantastic to use to clean your house and it stops heartburn you can take one drop of, of lemon essential oil on the back of your hand lick it hold it in the back of your throat kind of swish it around in your mouth then swallow it down you can do that up to four or five times and it literally stops heartburn it works really really well for that it also cleans out the lungs so when you breathe in those lemon molecules you can diffuse it or put a couple drops on a Kleenex and hold it under your nose and as you breathe in those lemon molecules they actually clean out your lungs too when you diffuse lemon essential oil it actually sterilizes the air they they have done all kinds of tests on this and it actually kills any airborne pathogens which include viruses bacteria funguses it kills them so you can sterilize your air this is a great thing to have if you have sick people in your home or near you or in your office space take lemon oil put a couple drops on a cotton ball breathe it in and it will help you you know keep clear of those things or if you can diffuse it diffuse lemon and not only are you stimulating your brain to function better but you're cleaning the air and so you're not gonna you're not as likely to catch an infectious disease lemon oil also cleans water you can put a couple drops in a glass of water shake your water up really really good to put that lemon oil down into the water and sip on that and you can do it use it that way also for heartburn um, it works that way too and as you drink uh, citrus essential oils it stimulates your metabolism to work better which is also a good thing <laughs> the next essential oil we're going to talk about is eucalyptus radiata the name comes from Greek eucalyptus meaning well covered for the flower buds which are covered with a cup like membrane you can see here in this picture which is thrown off as the flower expands I just think that's all interesting uh, eucalyptus originates in Australia and the white people learned its medicinal uses from the Aborigines there are about 50 different species of eucalyptus cultivated for essential oil production so it's really important to know what species of eucalyptus you're getting the purify skin therapy line there's actually three different eucalyptuses so how do you know right well if you don't know specifically which one you want then it's the eucalyptus radiata this one um, the radiata one is the one that most people think of eucalyptus as and it is the one we're going to talk about it's the most common eucalyptus and it is gentle enough to use with children and so this is pretty much the one you want unless um, you need another one for specifically so it's important though to know what species so with eucalyptus you must know what species you're getting because like I said we carry also eucalyptus globulus and eucalyptus citriodora um, but the radiata again is the most common one so this is re regarded as a general cure-all oil you can use it for any kind of wound made you can just take drops of it just like you do the tea tree essential oil drop it directly into a wound it also disinfects and heals the wound it's amazing you can use eucalyptus oil also on blisters and burns it reduces fevers and if you've had or your children have had a fever that's going on for a long time or it's burning too hot simply take two drops of eucalyptus radiata essential oil and put it on the soles of your feet of the feet on each foot put two drops um, rub it in and it's amazing to help fevers come down 
It also is really good with coughing. However, you don't want to do a lick trick with eucalyptus oil because eucalyptus essential oil can actually be quite toxic in the body. So you can diffuse it, you can breathe it in, you can apply it on your skin and it's completely non-toxic, but just don't take it internally or ingest eucalyptus essential oil. But it can be used for coughing. You want to breathe it in. So you can diffuse eucalyptus essential oil and it helps with coughing. It can help with croup that way. It is one of the best antiseptic oils <clears throat> with tea tree and lemon. They're very, very antiseptic, which means it kills the pathogens. Um, eucalyptus is your oil of choice for viral and respiratory infections. Now, if you have a respiratory infection, the best way to use eucalyptus essential oil is to diffuse it and breathe in those healing molecules right down into your respiratory system and your lungs and your bronchioles. Get those molecules right down in there, and they do amazing good job. Now, if you have a high-grade eucalyptus oil, that is. Lower-grade eucalyptus oils do not heal the same way, so you always want to make sure your grades of essential oils are good. So, okay, back to eucalyptus. Um, <laughs> good for viral and respiratory infections. If you get a viral infection, you can also put it on the soles of your feet. It goes right through the skin into your bloodstream and circulates and helps boost your immune system. So you can use it with colds, flus, and viral infections. Again, you'll put it on the soles of your feet and you'll breathe it in for that. It opens up, as you breathe in the molecules of eucalyptus oil, it opens up your entire respiratory system. It helps everything from your sinuses all the way down through the bronchioles, through the upper lungs, and down through the lower lungs. It helps your entire respiratory system. It's also an expectorant, and so if you have phlegm, in your lungs or, or in your sinuses, it helps get it up and out. So you will be coughing and spitting up and, and choking up phlegm, but that's good because you want to get it up and out. If it's down there, it will help get it up and out. And it opens things in the body. Eucalyptus is a very opening oil, so it opens up things in the body. And it's good for congestion of any kind, be it in your sinuses, be it skin congestion. Your female organs can benefit from this. Even emotions, if you feel like you're having congested emotions, <laughs> just breathe in eucalyptus essential oil and it helps open everything up. It's really, really good. It's extremely antiviral, like I talked about. It's extremely antibacterial. And so you can put it on the soles of your feet to help boost your immune system and it stimulates your immune system to be more effective and be stronger. So it also stimulates and supports your lymphatic system, which is a big part of your immune system. So you can, I love you using eucalyptus in baths, and you can use it in foot baths. Now, if you're going to use it in a bath, the way you want to do it is get some dead sea salts. We sell them on at PurifySkinTherapy.com. These are dead sea, the highest uh, quality, highly mineralized dead sea salts from the southern shores of the Dead Sea in Israel. And they're the most mineralized salts to be found anywhere in the world. So you take a half a cup to a cup of the Dead Sea salts. You put about 10 to 15 drops of, of your chosen uh, essential oil. You can put eucalyptus. You can put also in there tea tree or any other uh, essential oils in there. You mix it really good into the dry Dead Sea salts. Mix it into that. Then once it's mixed into the salts, then you put that into your warm bath water and that disperses the oil all throughout your bath water and it's very healing and then soak in that. Either soak your feet in that or get in and, and, and bathe in that. Um, if you just try to drop drops of the eucalyptus into your bath water, it is an oil and it will float on the top and it won't disperse throughout your bath water. So... Um, some of the most common applications are the vapor and topical applications. Eucalyptus, like I mentioned, is to be applied externally and not for internal or ingestion. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is lemongrass. Lemongrass is a great oil for pain, and I love to use it with pain, um, pain issues. Now, if you're having a lot of issues with pain, you can definitely use like I said, lemongrass, myrrh, and peppermint. Those are some of my favorite essential oils for pain. We also have a pain blend that uh, if you're experiencing a lot of pain or have a lot of pain if you, issues like arthritis or joint pain or muscle pain, try our Pain Ease blend. Um, but you can also layer these single oils. So it's great for pain. It supports and heals connective tissue, which includes ligaments, tendons, and cartilage. So if you have any issues with ligaments, ten tendons, or cartilage, 
you can apply lemongrass right over that spot. It helps with the pain and it helps support and heal the connective tissue in your body. Lemongrass is sedative, so it's calming and relaxing, and it's also very anti-inflammatory, which only helps if you're using it for pain issues. Uh, lemongrass can sterilize and disinfect also. It can disinfect the air so you can actually use it in a diffuser. You can put it in a mister bottle and mist it around, so, say like if you had to go to the hospital. I've heard of many people using lemongrass to disinfect the air and spray it over the bedding to disinfect the bedding and it just helps. It's super antiviral even in high dilution. The next essential oil we're going to talk about is orange oil and the orange tree is native to, do you know? Does anybody know? <laughs> do you have any idea where we get oranges from, where they originated at? I bet you didn't think about it. Okay. <laughs> so the orange tree is native to China. Isn't that interesting? It actually comes from China, where the flowers of the orange blossoms have been used for centuries in skin care and cosmetic applications. And we actually use orange and tangerine um, essential oils in our skincare line because it's so 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 good for your skin quite amazing for the skin it's cleansing for your skin it's decongesting for your skin um, it supports the formulation of collagen under your skin so it really helps with wrinkles and anti-aging type stuff it rejuvenates and repairs the skin but be aware that orange and all citrus oils can be photosensitizing so you just don't want to use them and then go out in the sun because that's a really bad thing. <laughs> so orange oil is also a pick-me-up. Like I mentioned, all citrus, citrus oils boost your mood. So you can put them in a mister bottle, spray them around just to lift the mood. You can mix lemon and orange oil like I mentioned before. Um, you can use them as an antidepressant or any blend of citruses work really good. They work for depression. They really, really help with anxiety and nervous tension. They can help with insomnia and help you sleep better, the citrus oils. Um, An orange emotionally makes one happy. I mean, even the color orange makes you smile. Think about it. So orange, the smell of orange makes you happy, and it in inspires a cheerful attitude. And orange oil stimulates the right side of the brain or creative thinking. Remember I said or lemon oil stimulates the left side of the brain? Well, orange oil stimulates the right side of the brain. So when you blend the two and make a lemon-orange combination, you can use it as a perfume and put it on your pulse points and inhale it. You can diffuse it. You can make it into a mister bottle with, with water in there, shake it up and mist it around. And you can greatly benefit your brain and your lungs and everything else while you use this oil. Orange also increases your metabolism, and you can put a couple drops uh, of orange oil in water and drink it also, as long as it's um, organic. It's more effective to increase your metabolism when combined with other citrus oils, so you can combine it with lemon, tangerine, red mandarin, green mandarin, or bergamot oils. Put those in your water to drink. Um, it's also, you can use it this way for coughing. It helps with coughing and it stimulates your lymphatic system and decongests your lymphatic system. These citrus oils are also very helpful for digestive issues, so they help your whole digestive system work better and more smoother. But be absolutely sure if you're taking citrus, especially citrus oils and especially when you're taking them internally, that they must be organic and it must say so on the label. Orange is an incredible, incredible solvent, so it's used in household cleaning also. It's used as a degreaser. It freshens and sterilizes the air. Now, the last essential oil we're going to talk about is spearmint, and one of my favorite oils. Spearmint is so incredible, what it can do. Spearmint is pretty much has the same uses as peppermint, so everything that we said about peppermint, you can use spearmint in the same way. It's a great breath freshener. It's a bug repellent, and you can use it on bug bites. But spearmint is a children's oil, where remember, peppermint is not. And so you can use spearmint with young children. And spearmint, unlike peppermint, is an amazing emotional oil and has amazing emotional release qualities to it. 
So spearmint helps strengthen, comfort, and support your inner child. All of us have an inner child. And if our inner child is hurt or sad or crying or scared or raging or frustrated, sometimes we don't sleep well and then we don't know why. And so we can breathe in spearmint oil, which helps calm, support, and soothes our inner child. And it actually helps us emotionally release a lot of stuff. So spearmint works so good for that. It also helps the body and mind let go of emotional baggage. Spearmint can stimulate your appetite if you need that. And so smell spearmint oil before bedtime, before you go to sleep, and it helps you sleep better. Because every time you smell it, it gives you somewhat of an emotional release, and it helps your body relax. And so I always tell people, take a couple drops of spearmint essential oil, put it on a cotton ball, hold it underneath your nose, and breathe it in for 5 to 10 minutes right before you go to sleep. You will fall to sleep faster, you will sleep better, and you will sleep deeper. Do this with children. If you have any kind of children that can't sleep through the night or don't want to go to sleep at night, start using spearmint oil with them right before you put them to bed, and it works really, really good. You can also take a couple drops. So we've talked about 10 amazing essential oils today. I apologize. This is not where it should be. <laughs> we talked about tea tree, orange, spearmint, French lavender, eucalyptus radiata, Lemon, peppermint, lemongrass, frankincense, and myrrh. I have seen frankincense alone at other companies for around $100 just for frankincense alone. You get 10 amazing essential oils for $190. This is available at uh, purifyskintherapy.com. And then there's also the favorites pack, which is seven essential oils. It's got tea tree orange, spearmint French lavender, eucalyptus radiata, lemon, and peppermint. For only $99.95, you can get either one of those. And if you order online, we do offer free shipping on $50 or more, which saves you some money. So head out over to PurifySkinTherapy.com and order one of these amazing packs. You're getting it for a great deal, and you get free shipping. Once you get your oils and start to use them, there's a couple things I want you to know. Number one is keep them away from light, heat, and oxygen because these are the things that make your essential oils go bad. So store them in, in cobalt blue bottles in a dark place, keep them out of the light, keep them out of the heat, and keep the lids on them tightly closed, and that will keep the oxygen away from them. Your oils will last better and for longer. And then also, just a warning, if you ever apply an essential oil to either you or a child and it becomes too hot on your skin, Simply apply a few drops of extra virgin olive oil or any oil, grapeseed oil, coconut oil, vegetable oil out of your kitchen, or a stick of butter if you don't have anything else. Just apply oil and the stinging, the burning is gone in seconds. Never, never, never use water because your intuition will say, oh, go wash it off with water, right? But water and oil repel each other, so it drives the oil hotter and faster into the skin and it actually causes it to burn hotter. So just always um, use oil and um, then you're safe to go. Get these oils, start using them for like we talked about. They're amazing, good oils. I just can't say enough because I just love these oils. Thank you so much for listening to our webinar. Head over to PurifySkinTherapy.com for great products and great education.